Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm going to do a video every day. So make sure you come back again tomorrow. So in today's video we're going to talk about optocouplers. This is going to be a talking hands video with some overlays. I'll chuck some overlays on the top to express certain things I'm covering. No drawing today. So optocouplers. Very common these days, especially because of the prevalence of switch mode power supplies. Any decent switch mode power supply has got an optocoupler on it. Here's one here. This is a control board out of a fridge. Freezer unit. It's been a great demonstration piece actually. Right here is an optocoupler. Here it is. It's an NEC 2581 optocoupler. I put an overlay here with the specs and pinouts and stuff like that maybe. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you enjoy the video series and you're not subscribed yet. There's lots of different versions of optocouplers. There's lots of different uh, variants of like pinouts, different specs for like voltages, and gain ratios. There's also a spec called the CTR current transfer ratio which is a, a relationship between the input current of an LED which is on the optocoupler and the output of the transistor. So optocouplers have an LED on the input and the output has some kind of transistor and it's either like an MPN transistor, BGT, or it could be a DIANC output which is used for AC systems and it basically allows for AC waveforms to be controlled rather than just DC type systems. All right? So it's either a BGT or a DIANC in most cases. I'm not aware of any other ones, but I don't know, maybe there's some edge cases out there. So basically what happens is when you power the LED, like a normal LED, which I've already covered, LEDs, you put some power into the LED, it emits light. Inside these optocoupler packages, there's an LED and there's a photoreceiver, which is actually the transistor in some form. So the photons from the LED then trigger the transistor and turn it on. And depending on the current you put into the LED, you get a harder or softer turn on of the transistor so they are meant as digital devices like you know on off states not really meant for analog kind of thing i mean you can kind of use them for that but it's not predictable and they can drift with age and stuff like that as well so they're meant for basically converting a signal from one section to another section with isolation that's why it's called either an optocoupler or an opto isolator the terms are kind of interchangeable there is some history and why they're different but I'm not going to go there. Basically, you can use one or the other. Basically, both representations are correct. But the main thing to think about is that it's isolating one circuit to another. So you can put some kind of signal on one side on an LED. That can give a confirmation to another section of the circuit to say it's got a signal or its power's turned on or whatever it may be. Now, these actually have bandwidth limitations because you are talking about an LED flashing, all right? So you can actually do pulse width modulation as well. So if you need to do some kind of analog signal, you need to convert to a PWM, and then you can send pulses. But the actual frequencies that they can have for bandwidth varies quite a bit. It could be 20 kilohertz for, say, Darlington type, I think. Maybe up to 300 kilohertz max, I think, is fairly common. There are some tricks that make them a bit better. You can increase the bandwidth a little bit, but there's trade-offs involved with that. So, I mean, you can do it. But... So I've put an overlay up now showing some specs of this particular optocoupler. That shows the maximum voltages can go on the LED and the maximum voltages can go on the transistor. And you notice that in one direction it's, I think, 30 volts, in the other direction it's about 7 or something like that. I can't be exactly what it were, but there's very different spots between transmitter, emitter, and collector for polarity basically. You think of it that way. LED f was about 1.2, 1.4 volts. So I've put some overlays up as well showing a typical circuit connection. So we show one side is the input, one side the output, and these particular circuits don't actually give you a voltage for the LED. But you have to basically, basically have to reverse your data sheet, see what the LED is known as being capable of being supplied, and you'll figure out the voltages and the currents. 10 milliamps would be pretty typical to supply to them, so that's basically what it is. It's LED and a transistor, so there's isolation between them. I mean, this particular one's got an isolation of 5,000 volts between the input and the output of the autocouple. That's why they're using power supplies a lot. So basically, the PDM output will feed back into this autocoupler, or it could even just be told, hey, the power's on. Yeah, it could be as simple as that, really. I'll be doing a video on switch my power supplies a bit later on. Or I don't know if I'll go into this type. More like I'll be doing buck and boost converters because they're a bit simpler. This is a fairly complex thing. I mean, yes, I do know a little bit about switch my power supplies. I'm not an expert on switch my power supplies. But yeah, that's basically it. An optocoupler isolates two circuits from one to the other, so you can safely send data across a barrier. It's for isolating two circuits. That's simple as that, really. I mean, LED one side, transistor the other side. You can do with them whatever you want, pretty much. So I hope you found it interesting. Playlist over here for more electronics beginners series stuff. 
place up here YouTube thinks you should watch. Subscribe link over there if you haven't already subscribed, and the Patreon support link if you feel like donating to the channel. Oh, there's also super thanks and stuff as well, usually down the bottom. If you want to give me a little sort of one-off donation thing, you can do that too. Bye.